I just follow you around, Chad. I just go. I just follow you. I wait till the sales, and then I follow you. Yeah. Um, I think some of the questions we raise about what is uh, what happens after you die, and um, and what is it that um, uh, the the legends and the myth of ghosts that we've heard almost our whole lives is there a connection to the real physical world and the and the um, scientific world and the religious world? Do, do, is there a truth in there somewhere that we can grab onto and go, hey, this maybe makes some sense? Uh, that's what I'm hoping for, at least. Yeah. I think, um, you know, what's great about um, fear is everybody here has a different one. <laughs> Uh, what you are afraid of is not the same what you are, what you are, what you are. I mean, everyone has their own personal fear of something that's unique to them. And what we're trying to do on the show is allow the ghosts uh, of our show to manipulate and take advantage of that individual fear that everyone has. So that by the time you've watched the whole show, that one fear that you might have might have been manifested <laughs> in such a way that it haunts you personally because we did such a good job of exploiting it in a way that is uh, unique and different and, and kind of scary. So hopefully that's something that after a season of Ghost Wars someone can say they did this thing with bugs or fire or water or the undead or whatever it is that you are afraid of and they nailed it. And I think that way we'll have accomplished kind of what we set out to do, which is to really tap into how individual fear is. It's really, uh, we all bring our own information when it comes to being scared. And it really is about who we are, where we come from, what we've been taught, what we've experienced, things like that. So that's, I think, a unique opportunity for a horror genre. My personal fear is uh, sitting here talking to all of you. No. I'm joking. No, it's not. Um, I think my personal fear is probably, um, I think, uh, I think just being alone. Like, not having anybody. No friends, no family, no loved ones. Like, just being completely isolated to the point where, because I, I need to connect. I'm like someone who needs to connect, so I think that would suck if I was totally cut off. Sorry? Have you personally ever had a paranormal I have personally never had one, but I've had, I have very close friends who've had them, so I, I'm, I have one foot in. So are you skeptical, or do you... Um, I'm skeptical, but I, I, I leave room for it to be um, possible. So I know that there are a lot, I probably filter out 70, 80% of what I've heard as being unlikely or implausible. And then there's that nagging 20%, 15% that I go, I just can't explain that one away. And it drives me crazy. And so I have to keep, you know, an open mind a little bit, which is, you know, I think a lot of people feel the same way. Yeah, I think we did a scene recently with uh, maggots. <laughs> it was in the tra it was in the trailer, and uh, it wasn't who you thought it was. It was the, the actress uh, Sonia Bennett who we dropped all these maggots on. You would have thought, well, she's the wrong person to have a fear of maggots, which wasn't her, but it was it was actually someone in the crew who just couldn't go near the the the, uh, the area we were shooting in because they just had this really just uh, irrational, completely psychological fear of maggots. And they just were like, I can't be on set today. I can't do my job. I, I, I will be freaked out. So that's the closest we've come from. It wasn't a cast member, though. Yeah. Of like horror tropes and whether you wanted to kind of avoid them or to kind of not the genre 
Yeah, we definitely we're, we're hyper aware in the writers' room of all the horror tropes because with a collection of writers, you everyone has uh, vocabulary. So in this, in some cases, we just wanted to take those tropes and give them a twist, so we could at least take advantage of them, build an expectation of the trope, and then use it against the audience. So in some cases, those tropes are are played out in the way that you expect them to play out, and then we reverse them or we just don't make them pay off the way you thought and that's a that's a really handy weapon as a, a writer and a filmmaker because we all come from that experience of seeing so many shows and movies that you start to develop kind of an, an expectation of what's going to happen and if you're and as a viewer myself as a fan myself I want to I want to take that and you, manipulate you with it if I can because I know what I'm going to think when I'm watching it and if I can use that as uh, as a way to surprise you then I've accomplished something we all have what's your favorite horror movie wow all time it's really hard because the and it changes you know depending on where I am in my life um I mean, I think I think growing up, well, Jaws had a huge impact on me. But it's such a great movie, all just in in general. It's so wonderfully executed, but it was really terrifying. I think Alien too. The, uh, the first Alien really got me. Uh, I was the right age. I was 14 when that chest burster came out, so I was pretty fucked up after that. <laughs> Uh, the Exorcist scared the shit out of me. Um, I had just enough of a religious education to like really be terrified. And uh, and then um, later on, I mean, I really liked The Thing. Just as a viewer, uh, I was probably older when it came out to really be scared by it. But it just it was a great movie in terms of how it took advantage of your fears and expectations. I like also Polanski movies like Repulsion and Rosemary's Baby because it's a different kind of horror. It's that horror of internalism and um, isolation and paranoia. Uh, so those movies are great. The Shining, I think, is a masterpiece. Yeah, I can't pick one. It's impossible. What's your stance on jump scares? Do you think they're like a cheap tactic? I like them when they're not what you think they're going to be. Like, I think a jump scare is best used when it's when the payoff is not the obvious choice. Sometimes they work because they work. And sometimes you plan them and they don't work. I don't know. I mean, it's it's a mixed bag. In terms of, oh, what we're showing? Yeah, I mean, there's a few graphic things that we've tried to do that I think are a bit over the top sometimes, but then I, you know, I, I turn to my my partners, uh, directors, the actors, the writers, and I go, is it just me or is this... And a lot of people will have their own opinion about it, so... But no, nothing we've... I've, I've, I haven't... Um, I haven't uh, canceled anything. No, not yet, no. There's still a few episodes to do, though, so you never know. Yeah. Good? Has it battled the network at all on anything about No, actually, the network's been really, really uh, helpful. Both networks, Sci-Fi and Netflix, are, are really understand what we're trying to do. So they actually, I think, are uh, keen to have us push the envelope where possible. But I think at the end of the day, more important than that is just a good show. You know, they just want a good show that people want to come back to. And that ultimately goes to character and story more than the scares being, you know, the right kind of scares or the wrong kind of scares. I think personally that's where a show succeeds and fails, is the, uh, the stories and the character. I haven't looked at the who the composer is. Yeah. I agree. Well, we, we, I approached a composer named Patrick Kerr, uh, and he is a... Um, he, like me, is a fan of uh, those movies from the 80s and 70s and 90s and likes that orchestral kind of filmic approach to horror. So we're doing a very kind of traditional orchestral score and um, leaning into that style, uh, much like the movies of those, uh, of those eras. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got stuff. We definitely have season two set up and where season two can go. Beyond that, 
Uh, haven't really thought about getting too far down the rabbit hole because it's a very uh, evolutionary show, not only with character but also location. So uh, I'm sort of trying to keep the show's opportunities to grow and change alive. Uh, so I'm not trying to get too dug in. Yeah. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. Cheers.